Hey, what's up guys? This is a video review of Mega Man Zero for the Game Boy Advance. I'm actually playing it on the Mega Man Zero collection on the Nintendo DS, but it's the exact same game, so it should make a difference. Um, this game takes place after Mega Man X5 and the Mega Man X timeline. Um, whether or not like a timeline really matters, I'm not really... I've never really been into the story of the Mega Man game, so it really isn't super deep, it's just sort of like giving you a reason to fight these robots. But anyway, it happens about 150 years after Mega Man X5. Um, the reason it skips 6, 7, 8 is because this was made between 5 and 6, and Capcom just made those without Keiji Inafune, the uh, creator of Mega Man. They made him without his knowledge. So uh, he had actually expanded on the story and already you know, it made a sequel, and they made those games anyway. But anyway, um, it takes place 150 years later, and Zero is awoken. Um, he was put in hibernation at the end of X5. Apparently, I do have that game. I don't remember the story that well. And then he comes back and he has no memory, and now he's uh, helping fight a resistance. Um, helping the. I think he's having a Reploids fight against humans or some. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't read that much of the cutscenes, I skip a lot of it. But the game itself is pretty great. So, what is there to say about it? It's a. Uh, Classic Mega Man style. It's um, very similar to the X games, um, except you only play Zero in this game. Um, and I guess through the story, you'll understand why and what's going on. But uh, you, one thing that's pretty cool, that's a differing thing from the normal X series, is that you have two different weapons, uh, two different weapon slots, and you can choose between your weapons. And as the game progresses, you do get more weapons. Though, to be honest, I found that as I played it. The first two, just the gun and the sword, are pretty much the most useful, and the other ones are only really needed in like certain areas or for certain for certain things. So most of the time, you are pretty good with the normal weapons. Um, one thing that's unique about this game compared to the X series is that the stages aren't set up in like a boss format where you pick pick the boss and pick the stage and then you go to that area. It's sort of just like missions that you go um, speak to somebody about. Um, that's something I really didn't like that much. Not only because you don't see who you're fighting, you don't see the stage. It's just sort of confusing like to pick the name of a mission to find out what stage it was. Even like taking footage for this review was confusing to me. How to like how to like take down the name of what the stage it just did. It's just like a title. Um, and the bosses are pretty. Uh, not that they're not memorable, but their names their names are like nothing that you really remember so it kind of makes it a little more confusing but that's just really but really fine nitpick from the game itself is pretty great um, you've got the same basic stuff one thing that's very cool is that your weapons power up as you play so as you use each weapon more often you actually get um, better features for like the gun will char the gun doesn't even charge up at first and then it charges then you get a second charge and then the sword can charge and then that sort of thing and then it gets more powerful as you go I uh, later in the game it was like a lot easier once your sword can charge up and like hit them uh, and your gun can charge up and hit, and hit them for more damage. Um, one thing that's also really cool is that it doesn't have, it doesn't have uh, the normal Mega Man style of you attack a boss and then you get the boss's power, uh, which is kind of a shame, but one thing it does have that kind of alleviates that a little bit is that throughout the game you get a couple different like chips. I guess um, it's like the type of, uh, the type of like an element for your armor. And you can pick uh, electric, fire, and ice. At least those are the ones I got when I was playing. I don't have anymore. And those, there's different bosses that are vulnerable to, to different ones of those, and like have different effects that happen to those bosses. Sort of like how in Mega Man, when you pick the op the right weapon for the boss, something something special would happen. But uh, it's not the same as the getting weapons of each boss. And that power up in the normal game doesn't really help you that much. Helps you a little bit, but not that not that much. One thing that's a big difference here is that you don't get upgrades like you do in the Mega Man X series. You, I mean, your weapons upgrade, but your armor, your health, that sort of stuff doesn't really upgrade throughout the game, um, which kind of, which makes the game pretty hard. It really ups the difficulty a lot, so it's definitely um, puts it up there in terms of difficulty in Mega Man games. Um, I uh, I beat it in about a week, but I I'm pretty like hardcore Mega Man player. I beat. Um, a lot of the original X games, a lot of the original games, like 1, 2, and 3. Um, so I'm pretty used to it, but for a new Mega Man player, I would say that this really isn't the place to start. I would start maybe at just Mega Man X on Super Nintendo. 
But if you are um, like a Mega Man fan, this is definitely a really cool game to check out. Um, one thing in the game that, um, uh, one thing about the upgrades is that the only way you can upgrade in this game is through something called a Cyber Elf. Um, it's something they introduced in this game that I'm not really a big fan of. Um, not only because I don't really like elves and like magical fairy creatures, but also just because it makes it a lot harder to, to uh, end up getting more health. There's a uh, there's some cyber elves which you can use um, that you only use once, and they give you like a temporary health power up. It's sort of like picking up a big health, so it's, I feel like it's a big waste because um, you only use them once, and then like that's the whole game. You can only use it once. And then there's also some two different kinds of uh, cyber elves that are permanent. So one, so we'll get, like there's one that will give you a permanent health upgrade. There's one that will give you a permanent damage upgrade and a permanent. Um, uh, permanent upgrade to take less damage when you attack people, and I actually did use those when I was playing the game. But um, you have to you have to do something called feeding it, and you have to give it the uh, you have to give it energy. Uh, the energy is in those blue powers you pick up during the game, and it really is hard to pick up a lot of that stuff um, while you're playing. You only pick up like basically like 50 in each level, and then the cyber elves take like over a thousand uh, sometimes for. Uh, to feed it to the point where you can use it. So it's kind of a weird system. I don't really like the grinding idea. Um, I'm not really sure. I haven't played through the later X games, so I'm not sure if they... Uh, like a later, later Mega Man Zero games to see if they continue with that, but that was sort of maybe to me like the worst feature compared to Mega Man X, but the game itself is really great. Um, so yeah, don't take a negative look on the game from this. It's a really great game. It's just, um, you know, in some difference, it has some differences from the X series, but it's still pretty fun in its own right. Uh, I played on the uh, DS version and the collection, and definitely worth picking up on that if, uh, if you're interested. One thing I will note, though, is that I'm playing the DS Lite. And the DS Lite's kind of not that comfortable for, like, clawing your whole hand around for, like, a control-heavy game like Mega Man. Um, if you have another system, like maybe the original Game Boy Advance would be a little more comfortable, or if you have an SP, um, or actually I have a 3DS XL, I played on there, and it's pretty comfortable because I got the ground edges. But anyway, that's just a very minor note. Um, well, that's just an overview, and sort of a review of uh, Mega Man X-Zero for Game Boy Advance, and I hope you guys liked it. And for anybody who's come back to my videos, um, I am back, I'm making a couple of videos. Um, not going too crazy, but I will be around, so I'll see you guys again soon.